This week on Three Sides of the Coin, we are joined by Rick Monroe. He's a Grammy-nominated country star, and he joins us this week to share some insight and why we all should listen to some more country music. I wonder if he plays hockey. Get your cowboy boots out, put on your cowboy hat, That's and right. go kick your dog. Yeehaw! <laughs> Save a horse, ride a cowboy. No, please, seriously, <laughs> don't don't kick your dog, okay? I care about animals. Yeah. You're going to get hate mail now, dude. <laughs> well, that's Jeez. it. Now you stirred the shit pot again. Good going, Mike. This, this is, is Three Sides of the Coin, talking all things KISS. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. Want to get your official Three Sides of the Coin logo and Shocker tee? Now you can. We ship worldwide. Get yours online at shop.threesidesofthecoin.com. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. I, I don't know how to introduce this lineup. This is an interesting lineup we've got going today. First, if you're not watching, oh, you really should be watching this video. Lisa's sitting outside in a tank top. It's just beautiful and Mark's not My hair's blowing in the wind. Yes, it's her, just... Her, a tear coming out of her eye from Brent, Ben Lo Roethlisberger being sidelined for the year. I'm so. still representing. Yeah. <laughs> no, I can't quite see. You can, you, can, you, can you pull a little more? Oh, shoot. Yeah. Okay. Are you uh, still there? I, I, you're, I can still hear you, Tommy. You're frozen okay. again. Yeah, right. I can still hear you. So, so, you know, just as a heads up, Tommy's using Mark's router again. Yeah, I'm having issues He's today, and I don't know why. And, and for those of you out there that care, this is your dream episode. There's no Mark Cicchini. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of you. So actually, all the rest of us will have a chance to talk. Yeah, nobody's going to talk over us. There's no ice cubes in the background. There's no munching on chips. And there, <laughs> there's no leaving the show because I'm hungry. Oh, I guess I put my drinks and chips away. Then I'm sorry. I, <laughs> yeah. Well, you're no the guest. You're the guest. You're you're permitted yeah, to do that. We're not very professional. You're... So we want to introduce our special guest today. He's going to be with us for the whole program. This is Rick Monroe. He is a Grammy-nominated mm -hmm. singer-songwriter and just all-around super guy. So Rick is going to join us through the whole podcast today, and we'll get to everything that uh, we're going to discuss after we do our opening stuff. So, um. Housekeeping. What? Anything we need to to mention housekeeping wise? Well, you know what? I don't think we mentioned the fact that um, the U.S. leg of the the end of the road tour is over, but they can't not cancel. Let me correct myself. They postponed a third show, Salt Lake City. So the last three shows of this leg of the tour all got postponed and rescheduled. Um, the first two were Oakland and L.A., which we had talked about. And there was no – they gave a reason of production issues. But then Gene tweeted out that the Salt Lake City show had to be rescheduled because he was going in for a uh, – I don't know, what was his wording? A minor procedure? Something, something like that? Procedure. Something like that. Um, so no idea what the procedure was. Haven't heard anything how it went. I suspect that the original two shows that got postponed were because of this, quote, procedure. And that something happened that he needed to do it a little bit earlier than than was scheduled. So the last three shows got postponed. So if you have tickets, don't panic. It's They're happening in March. I'm yep. not sure about Salt Lake yet. So there'll be more U.S. dates. So I know some of you are like flipping out because the shows were postponed, but they're not canceled. And, and, so I, and just, I know some some people were freaking out because it's like, 
you know, how could they do that to us? I invested money. I'm flying. I, it's like, dude, it's a medical thing. I mean, what yeah. more do you want? Do you do you it want? Happens. It happens. It yeah. it does. And listen, Gene's seventy years old now. It happens much more frequently as you get older. So, just be thankful that he, that he's still here. That Kiss is still here. That they're still touring. I mean, stop being petty little bitches and complaining that, oh, my show got canceled. Hey, my show got canceled too. I haven't yeah. seen them on this tour yet, and it won't be until March. So, My buddies were supposed to be on. Um, Royal Bliss was playing with them in Salt Lake, and so they ended up doing a, a show you know, for that. So I know that that, but they did say they were coming back supposedly. Yeah, Gene, Gene said um, they will be coming back. They probably just didn't have a rescheduled date when he had to make the announcement that the show was not going to happen. Because I think they announced it like the day before Salt Lake City. I mean, it was pretty short notice that Salt Lake City wasn't happening. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, I mean, not, not to be a downer on this, but we all know that over base, over the last week, we lost two rock stars that, yeah that yeah. that means something to a lot of us i mean first eddie money and then rick okasic and you know they were both in their i think even even eddie money was like 70 years old so they were both in their 70s and you know it's just you know i i, I see that and i hear that and i'm like man you know What's going to happen when we when we wake up one morning and there's the news that one of our members of yep. Kiss is gone? I was thinking the same thing too. I was thinking the same thing. Well, and you know, you're starting to see it now with classmates as we get older. Yeah. You know? And it's it sucks because it's like you forget how much you love the music until something like that happens. And I want to step off here the ledge for just one brief second. The um issue that eddie money had from what i understand was esophageal cancer, cancer. And stage four stage four so at yeah. that point you're in real trouble um our friend of the show michael happy from hairball uh he had stage three and so far has beat it he's he's scanning clean and he doesn't drink he doesn't smoke he doesn't do drugs i've known him my almost my whole life but he had um a lot of heartburn so if anybody out here is listening, if you're having a lot of heartburn issues, please go to the doctor and have it checked out because that is the kind of thing that can start this disease. And it's very pre preventable and they can you know, take care of you if they get to it early. So please, if you're having any issues, go and see your doctor. Well, to add to that, there's actually um, the papilloma version too, which my brother passed away from in December from. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, sorry for that. Right. Didn't deal with any of that, but got throat cancer. You know, they first did the radiation, thought they got it. They didn't. It's one of the most brutal things. Actually, there have been some some of the biggest oncologists you're looking at as an epidemic, especially for males in like their mid 30s, 40s to 50s. Throat cancer is becoming a major, major thing. Why? And, did, did uh, they just it just seems well because you know they're giving people like for human papilloma and all the different things like that. They're giving them. Uh, they have different uh, injections for that to try to like stop it. But it's, what happened prior to that is starting to come up really bad. So just that's another thing. If you have even a sore throat, get it checked because the, the sooner you get it checked, the better your options are and your chance to, to beat it. But once it gets cer certain, you know, far enough along, there's not much you can do. I mean, you know, and, and with Eddie Money's case, listen, guys, if you need another reason why you should not smoke, I mean, come on, yep. just right there. I mean, it, it it without question, everybody knows smoking causes cancer. Yep. So just don't. And but you know, it what it made me sort of start thinking about with with Eddie and Rick was it really it's it's time for people to stop bitching and complaining about oh i don't like this guy in the band i don't like this person's singing i don't like this person's guitar playing it's like stop just being negative about everything because and this isn't just related to kiss because a lot of our favorite bands are 
60, 70, and older, you could wake up one night and, and they're gone. It's just, yep. you know, a blink of an eye. I mean, Rick Ocasek was like, it was just like, blink of an eye. It's like, Rick Ocasek's gone? What, yep. what happened? Was he sick? Was he sick? He had, a sur- he had some form of surgery, and I don't know the exact full details. And supposedly he was recovered. Yeah, but he was recovering at home. That's right. Well, I think they said home. complications from surgery. I think that's what they said. Yeah, so uh, I don't know enough about, you know, surgeries and medicine to know what that could mean. Uh, you know, was he taking painkillers and medicine that didn't react well together? I mean, that's always an issue where medicines can can sometimes be more dangerous than they do good for you. So... I mean, well, and so it's actually perfect then that we're having Rick on today because it's we're. I want to talk about what we discuss on a regular basis of finding new music. Um, but before we get to all that, do you think we should? Do we have anything else we want to cover? Do you want me to do some comments? If you got some comments, yeah. I mean, our last week's show seems to be getting a lot of interest and a lot of love, where we talked about did Ace and Peter save Kiss by not being in the band. And and Rick, just so you know, that's the kind of stuff that makes people insane because they never actually listen to the show. Some of them just start attacking us. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And Tommy is frozen, frozen again. Yeah, so, you know. We, Michael, you're frozen too. Yeah. Really? Yeah, you were frozen yeah, for a second. I just wasn't Rick, moving. Is, uh, was Mike frozen the whole time? No, he was second. He was frozen. Um, so, he wasn't so, for me. So you know, get upset about things that they just they assume is going on, or they assume that's happening they, on the show. They again. assume what we're talking about. I mean, the 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 whole premise of last week's show was, um, what events in Kiss's career saved Kiss? What things did they do not do that happened that saved Kiss? Taking off on the the ongoing running joke. Did Vinnie Vincent save Kiss? Which, of course, no, he didn't. Um, well, Unk up alone was just enough to make me not dig the guy. I mean, I know he's great and all, but then I don't know the Unk just I didn't get that. Well, you, you know, and 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 you know, as Paul Paul would say, it's like, what do we do now? Giraffe Boy and Dog Man, and you know, yeah. the, char- the characters had didn't work like that when you just had to put somebody in makeup. But right. you know, we were talking about stuff like. Um, you know, did did Kiss Alive save Kiss? Did the success of Beth save Kiss? Um, the reunion tour save Kiss. So we had a number of taking the makeup off saved Kiss. And it was actually Mark who came up with the idea. He's like, you know, was Kiss saved because Ace and Peter weren't in the band? And I was just like, wow, I hadn't even thought to that extent, but yeah, I mean, I don't, and and basically, you tell us what you think, Rick. I don't think Kiss would have survived the '80s with Ace and Peter in the band. No, because what, you you need more of a guitar hero. Which I mean, Ace, you know, Ace is great for what he does, but he wasn't a gunslinger like a lot of the cats that were going around that time. And even drum wise, Peter Chris is, and then people are going to hate him for this, but he was he was pretty rudimentary. I mean, you know, he wasn't he wasn't you know, like an Eric Carr, some of these guys that were definitely pretty solid players. Yep. You know, I mean, he was great as a beginner. And you can also see the evolution from when they did get into like Lick It Up or do these other stuff. It was, they fell right, they were like right in that glam rock scene. Perfect. And, you know, Paul's voice seemed to like kind of expand. All of it changed around that time. So maybe them not being in the band was good for that transition. Yeah, so. I, I, I agree. I just, I don't think musicianship wise ace and peter would have been able to cut it with kiss in the 80s and kiss would kiss would have had to evolve through the 80s even if ace and peter were there they couldn't have stuck to you know love gun that that they had to evolve into a different band with changing times i don't think those two guys would have been comfortable i don't think they would have fit i don't think the public would have bought it I think Kiss Out of Makeup would have ran its course much quicker than it did. I see that. I, I believe that to be true. 
you know, like I said, in Paul Stanley's voice, I don't know what he did, you know, through a couple records, but he turned it. It's almost the same thing that Steven Tyler did. Steven Tyler went from being an okay singer to being an amazing singer and within a, a weird transition in their careers. And uh, definitely Paul, when on Lick It Up, he was singing things that he was never singing before. Yeah, well, and by the time they hit Crazy Nights, he was hitting notes and s- yeah. and stuff that you're just like, now, may- maybe looking back now, we're like, okay, maybe you shouldn't have done that because maybe it did something to your voice. Right. It hurt you in years later. But... But at the at, time, that was at, what the, at the time it was yeah needed. it was needed yep. it worked it it was received very well so well um, it does everybody because I mean look at Xander I mean cheap trick that guy just keeps getting better yeah but but you know that's why because he doesn't talk during a show <laughs> where's Paul <laughs> Stanley he doesn't like, do any raps he's telling his whole love gun story where Paul Zan- Paul will just I mean um, Xander will just sit there and be finished and just look over and it's you know. And this is our singer, you know. He doesn't do anything. Yeah, that, maybe that's a good point. Yeah. So Robin's got something going on there. He just needs to you know, sing and not say anything. He's yeah, he's unbelievable. So so anyway, Tommy, do you have any comments you want to read? Yeah, there's one that's really long, and I don't want to get into the whole thing. There was one guy, um, B40, B40, who started out. Great point made by Mark at the 59 minute mark. So we're not going to read that. Um, <laughs> Uh, but he he wants to talk about all of this different stuff. And this gentleman's name is Rick R. And um, he's it, it's so, so long, I don't want to read the whole thing. So if you guys want to read this, it's on the YouTube channel right now. I'm just going to read the middle paragraph. So he's talking about keeping Ace and Peter in the band longer and removing the makeup. So he says... Um, Ace and Peter never signed up to be, they signed up to be in a rock and roll band, not some kitty superhero band. They could all do interviews without... Did, I, did you lose me? I got your audio still. Okay. My my picture on my screen keeps blacking out on me, so my apologies to the listeners. Um, they could do interviews without makeup, which Ace would have liked because he's always complaining about the liquid silver. And Peter might have been oh, – this is my favorite. Peter might have been featured on the cover of popular magazines at the time. The girls may have bought the magazines for Peter instead of Sean Cassidy. Well, that's a good reason uh, to keep some of the band. During the, eight, <laughs> during the 80s? No, in this in the like the late seventies, early eighties. Yes, his contention is is that they would have become more popular with the original four if they would have just taken the makeup off. Well, because staying together was more I, important. I actually got a you know was it two weeks ago where we talked about um, the Uriah Heap video on how yeah. you know yeah. they didn't have that that look that fit the eighties. I you know and this will probably piss off some people, but I think Ace and Peter. Especially Peter, I don't think would have had the look that fit the '80s. I mean, I, you know, beard no. and mustache, and he, you know, he didn't have long flowing hair. You know, and even Ace wasn't in the best of. He wasn't looking the best during well, during his yeah. '80s. No. And in all fairness to Rick R., please, like I said, it's very long and he's got all kinds of different ideas. So go to the page and read it and start the start the uh, conversation. Um, and to your point, there was also someone that said, thanks a lot. I can't unsee this. Your I heap video now that he's seen it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So he's right. You know, I mean, uh, and, 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 that, and that's what what Kiss had going for them during the 80s. Now, hey, listen, I'll be the first to say Gene didn't fit the look of 80s. He didn't fit the look at yeah. all because he was pretty much uncomfortable paul looked amazing bruce fit in perfect eric carr fit in perfect so for the most part kiss fit what was needed to survive the 80s well yeah. gene, gene is like the big demon anyway so he does he didn't need to look the part he just needed to look like gene simmons you know what i mean him the tongue the whole lot but, his but, whole but, but you know during, during the 80s he didn't know what that was supposed to be because yeah. he, he, you know, he was used to having the makeup where he could be a character, and right. now he doesn't have that. He got to be the demon. Now he's got to be, to your point, Gene Simmons. Yeah. And what is Gene Simmons when the makeup comes off? You know, when the makeup <laughs> came off of Paul, he was still the same thing. He was a rock yeah. star on stage. In makeup yeah. or out of makeup, he's the same thing. Out of makeup, Gene's not a demon. Yeah. Well, it depends. It depends on who you talk to. 
<laughs> yeah. I, think, I think he got. I think Gene. I think Gene finally got into his comfort zone doing revenge. Yes, exactly. exactly. Other than that, I think he just did not know what direction he wanted to go in, and I think he finally hit it at revenge. Yep. That's when he looked perfect and felt. You could tell he felt comfortable in his. I mean, he he, he actually looked pretty decent on Animal Eyes, but then he lost it all on <laughs> Asylum. Yeah, it was B. Yeah, something bad happened there. Yeah, that, that was terrible. I mean, you just you can't put Gene in that type of stuff. It works on Paul, but it doesn't work on Gene. Now, Gene's a guy who's never he's never drank or done any drugs or any of that, right? He's, right. he's like, it's, that's wild. That's so that's so rare. That's actually Paul's the same way too, right? Or no, I don't know. Right, Paul. Think, Paul does. I think Paul drinks wine casually. Yeah, yeah. he's like a wine drinker, but not. I, I don't think know. more of a dinner wine drinker. Than yeah, I don't think Gene even does that. Yeah, that's wild. Hey, um, just back to an old point real quick. When we yeah. talking about the, the, the people that have passed away, when I was really bummed about it, my wife did bring up a really good point. Ultimately, though, they're still around because you can turn their music on. Oh, yeah, the music. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Their right. legend lives on. The their music legend lives on. Will so that's, live that's forever. a great point. Yeah. But, but you know, just – Take advantage of the fact that they're still here, and yeah, you know, if they're touring this summer, next spring, go see them. Go see whatever band that is, because you don't know. By by six months from now, they might not be able. Your band, whoever it is, might not be touring anymore. I mean, you never want to have a woulda, coulda, shoulda. You know, yeah. I mean, and and this just came in the news today, and I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, and this didn't necessarily impact a musician. But Josh Turner's crew yeah. bus went yeah. 50 feet off a road. Seven people in the crew were injured. One person was killed. Oh. Now, Josh and his band were in a separate bus, and they're okay. But even young musicians, I mean, just blink of an eye moments like that, something can happen, and boom, they're no longer creating new music. They're no longer able to do shows, you know. Yeah. Well, look at my friend um, David Z, who died in that accident yep. in Florida. You know, Z Rock. Yeah, was it Z O two? He was Z O two. Yeah, he was with Z O two, but he was with um, what band was he touring with? Not Disturbed. What was the band called? I don't know. That's neither here nor there. But you know, in a blink of an eye, he's just in his in his tour bus, you know, in his RV, just going down to a show, and in a blink of an eye, he's gone. So you never know. You never know. Well, we put a lot of time on the road, so that we put a lot of ourselves into a lot of exposure by being out there so much. So, yeah, I mean, our odds go up on that kind of thing. Well, yeah, because all it takes is someone to fall asleep at the wheel, you yeah. know, yep. or anything. And, and I, I suppose now would be a good time to kind of introduce Rick. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now's a good time. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Rick is still alive. Yeah. <laughs> Seven minutes into the call, but, hey, look, it's Rick. <laughs> well, so uh, this is... Uh, Rick, Rick is an artist, as you know, like I mentioned earlier, Grammy, Grammy nominated uh, country artist. And every year I do photography, as you guys know, at uh, Rockfest and Country Fest. And every year I'm looking for a new band that's going to just blow me away. So Rick, you're just going to have to sit here and take some accolades. Uh, <laughs> and Rick's band was that band. Monster. He, this guy is fucking unbelievable people and this goes to the heart of what we're talking about today get off your asses and get out and find some new bands because when they're 70 years old they're not going to be touring forever so you know rick and i just struck up a conversation because i just went up and introduced myself and said hey i really enjoyed the show i talked to all of his band members they're all very very talented musicians and it was just a joy when you see someone who is such a great musician play that you've never seen before and that's how ended, Rick ended up on the show, and I was on his his podcast earlier this week. So um, I'm happy that you you are uh, willing to join us today, Rick. And I wanted to cover a bunch of different stuff, but I suppose we should start with the most obvious that Michael always asks our guests is, when did you become a Kiss fan, or when did you first hear about the band, or what was your first record? Oh, man, the first... I'm trying, I'm trying to think of what it was. I don't know if it was like Kiss Alive or the, that. I think it was like Kiss Alive. 
Okay. It was just like to, to hear that because you know my older brother was way into music. My brother was like he turned me on from everything from Garth Brooks to Metallica to Kid. I mean, he was the one who was always turning me on to everything. And I just remember, you know, I, I th- just hearing the crowd and and that that energy. And I was like, okay, wait, these guys. You know, this is back. You're looking at you know in an album. You're going, these guys, these crazy looking cats are making music like this. I was always, and from that point on, I always was just very into. Um, now, I love the theatrics, and that's one of the first concerts I went out and saw too. Now, when, wh- how old were you? When was this? So we, as Mark, as Mark likes to say, timeline means everything. So, well, it means everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm uh, just in my just turning forty, so I don't really know what like that would probably be like. What I was probably like nine, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, or something like that. Oh, and there's Lisa's. Maybe we lost Lisa. Maybe she's, she's a hummingbird no, attack. Yeah. So I'm here. I'm sorry. So yeah, because I, mean, I started because like, again I started listening to a lot of music when I was really young too. Like as far as what the kind of music that I was getting into, from you know when, when I was a kid, my mom was into singer songwriters, and then I got into you know all that other stuff. Probably about six, seven, eight, and nine was when I was listening to a bunch of stuff. So what what was it that made you? He's frozen. That Tommy, come on, spit it out. Come on, man. Yeah, we're come waiting. On. What was it that made you <laughs> what? What? I don't know. I don't, know. <laughs> <laughs> don't leave us hanging, Tommy. First solo I ever learned on guitar though was Detroit Rock City. When I was sitting around, we were at rehearsal one day, and the band's like, "Let's do this." And so we, uh, I'm just usually a rhythm player, and so I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna learn that." So. When was the first time you actually saw Kiss in concert? What I saw were? them probably. Um, what was the record after Lick It Up? Animal Eyes. That's when I saw them. What was okay. the first time I saw them. I never, I never, I've never actually got to see them in makeup. Even with wow. the reunion tour, you haven't seen it or since? Not sure yet. No, I haven't gotten a chance to see it because I've never been able to just make it. Every time, because we're on the road so much. Right. So every time I'm somewhere it's like i kind of zig and they zag and so i always have missed it but i would love to actually i would love to see that before that goes away nice nice so what was your so you kind of you kind of came in the non-makeup era of kiss yeah. even though yeah. it was kiss alive and makeup that hooked you so was there a little bit of an issue there that you had to deal with of like you know it's not quite as cool um, yeah, I, you know, when I, cause I remember seeing like the, like when I was into it with the makeup and then I went and saw them live, I thought, well, this is, yeah, it's not quite the same thing. You know, I definitely didn't think, cause I actually, I actually, I think I was at one of their video shoots for, um, uh, is it tears are falling? I think when I was a kid, I actually got to go to one of their video shoots in LA for that. The, maybe it was uh-huh. crazy nights. I don't know. Did, did, I, I don't remember where they shot Tears Are Falling. I know Crazy Nights, they did a live audience shooting at, I think it was the Olympic Auditorium. Yeah, that's when I, yeah, that's when I saw them. Yeah. Where yeah. was that like? It was in LA. That was actual box. It's an old boxing arena. Yeah. But what, what video was that for again? Crazy Nights. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's, you know, come on, you're talking this so long ago, I can barely remember these things. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing you're still a fan after sitting through that. Yeah. But I was, you know, I was a little kid, man. I mean, to me, this was like the coolest thing in the world to see. You know, oh, yeah. you know, Paul Stanley breaks the guitar every night and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that's that was I thought that was awesome. So at 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 that time, you were into Kiss during the '80s. Were you into other, you know, the hair metal bands of that era as well, or was oh, it only just yeah. Kiss? No, I liked all that stuff. But I, it was weird because I was also listening to like. You know, I said like, you know, Hank Jr. And I would be listening to like Metallica. So it'd be kind of a weird thing. Cause I mean, but I loved, I love the band's Warrant. I love the band's, um, I loved, uh, I'm trying to think of anything else that we were into. Kind of whatever was kind of going on at the day, whatever MTV was kind of shoving down our throats, we were enjoying, you know, cause back then they had, um, Ricky Rackman or something. Yep. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. They actually had music videos back then. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's funny. I was just watching MTV, and it's it's uh, shows about people getting drunk and doing stupid things. Are they like, still oh, have MTV still on? Yeah, but it's not. It's, there's there are no music videos. It's all like like Jersey Shore shows and, and, and drama. Yeah, reality shows. Yeah, yeah. So then, how did you 
as you grew up, then how did you make the leap? Because you're, well, it makes sense, I suppose, because you're listening to all types of genres of music. How did you settle on what you're doing? Well, from a songwriter's point of view, I, I like what, what country music, well, at least when I came into it, when I really, when I got very serious about writing, it was more about, it's more of a storyline and more of a, you know, a, a way of life sort of deal where, and I was, but I was like the thump of rock and roll. So I was trying to find, I've always been trying to, to match that. I've been trying to keep that kicking rock and roll sound with the country writing. Um, you know, and at, at one time country was kind of heading our direction. Now it's turning into more of a hip hop thing. So, Which I don't understand. I, I would love to get, I don't get that. Yeah, I don't, I just, just, you know, I don't, whatever, I don't begrudge you by success, but I'm also not a fan of it, so. Well, no, it, it, it's just, it doesn't make sense to me, because it, that I could see when it was moving towards the rock genre of blending those two together, that's where my interest was raised. Uh, you know, I, I look, I grew up on Johnny Cash, and we had a lot of the classic country, and, you know, I missed a decade or two of stuff. I don't honestly don't know much about Garth Brooks. I know people love him and stuff and he's wonderful, but I don't really know all, all that much. But over the last five to 10 years, now I'm finding more interest in it again because of bands like you, like you. And I, that's probably part of why your stuff was appealing to me listening to it because it, it's very rock oriented because it's rock got, age. well, you know, Garth yeah. Brooks is a huge Kiss fan. You knew yep, that, right? Yes. Yep. And he's oh, yeah. a massive Kiss fan and his shows reflect it. That's the other thing, too. I mean, going back into that is anything that's that theatrical and that entertaining and really gives a person their ticket value. That's that's something that I think gets lost on a lot of different artists these days. You know, it's 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 funny because as a kid, when you were growing up and you've got your favorite band, that's your favorite band. And anything that isn't that style is the enemy. I mean, yeah. like growing up in the late 70s into the 80s, it was like. And, and Mark and I were having a, a instant message chat about this. It's like, you know, new wave. That was the that was the enemy of Kiss and Motley Crue. New wave band. Now, secretly, I'm loving the Human League album, and I'm buying all of that <laughs> stuff. But God damn, if I'm out there, I'm like death to new wave. You know, go away. You guys can't play. And sadly country was there as well it was like right. wait a second you're listening to country music you're listening to don williams and johnny cash screw you i mean that's not motley crew that's not twisted sister you know it's almost like when you were younger your mentality was people only had room to support one thing if you're not yeah. supporting well, your game. that was your crew you were like yep. you were like this is your thing and you were into it i mean that's i, I was like that because I, mean, I even like i mean i love judas priest i mean that's I, iron maiden those bands queens um the, all those kind of bands i just thought were amazing but the but the cool thing about growing up the way i did is i also like john denver and i also like jim croce and i also like i said like garth brooks or you know going into alan jackson so i, I always had both those kind of things going on so, I, I, you know, you know, so it's got to be. Well, I know it, it is as a kid. It's a challenge to balance that yeah. because you can't be seen, you know, at school wearing a country T-shirt when you had a kiss T-shirt on the day before. That's just yeah. not not going to go over well. I just had the coolest book in school. I just would have like a big Garth Brooks logo and a kiss logo with the Van Halen logo right next to it. and Be like, yeah, yeah, check me out. And then, of course, a big read symbol. You know, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or you know, on the front on the front side of the book, it's all country logos. The back side, it's rock. Depending on who walks by, you just flip the book flip over. Yeah. <laughs> I moved around a lot, so I never really had to worry about that. And I actually quit school when I was fifteen. Got a, a got a some kind of clearance to get a GED early, and I was actually in college by the age of like just turning sixteen. So I did that, and I ended up going to Musicians Institute. So I moved to LA when so I was you're sixteen. You're kind of a Sheldon. Yeah, sort of, but I wasn't really that smart. I just was smart enough to get out of the system. That's it. Yeah. That's pretty smart, though. It's, yeah. it, it, it's cool. Once you get a bit older, you realize there's nothing wrong with liking different styles of music, and then you're comfortable to embrace it, and especially when you become a musician as you get older. Then you can let that stuff come in and influence you. Like we were talking about with Garth Brooks, it's like, 
he lets that Kiss production and show influence yeah. him. He may yeah. not he may not in the middle of the show sing great praises to Kiss, but if you're a Kiss fan, you're looking at it going, "Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen, seen that." that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't huh? you? Because I I want to be entertained. When I go to see a show, you don't have to have pyro, but it's nice when you act, when the band members actually move around and interact with the crowd, because mm-hmm. that's part of the issue that I have with country music. And maybe again, that's another reason why I thought you guys were so good is you guys are really good at entertaining the crowd. Um, and some of some of your counterparts, man, they just freaking stand there and don't do a thing. I don't know, man. I have, I have a pretty, pretty staunch belief in my guys and my band. I'll have this. The deal is, is like, you know, that you've heard that saying two or 20,000, you play the same way. And yep. the other thing is, is if people are coming to a show, anybody who's coming has probably had to get a babysitter, has had to do parking, has had to buy the tickets, was probably going to buy some merch and beers are expensive and on and on and on and on. It racks up a lot of money. So when someone's standing in front of me, it's not just a person standing in front of me. It's a person who went out of their way to stand in front of me. So I better give them every bit that I can to try to make that value happen. Because otherwise, I mean, again, they've gone through so much to be there. Yeah, I drove there. But other than that, I need to give them something that makes it worth their time and their money. But that's great to hear from a yeah. fan's perspective because it does make a difference you know because the thing is is uh, some of these bands i don't think they understand that even if it's a smaller crowd every single one of those people is a music you know lover and yeah. they have friends who like music and they're going to go back and tell them about the bands that they liked and they're going to tell them even more about the bands that they didn't like right. so i just think you can't ever squander an opportunity to make an impression on somebody and back to what we kind of started the show with, you never know the next time you're going to step on a stage. So every opportunity you get to do it, you treat it like it's your last one and you just go do it. Because, you know, who knows? You know, anything can happen in life. So given that opportunity, you treat it with reverence and you go out and you do the job you're supposed to do and entertain like you're supposed to. So how do you build a brand for yourself? Because we're living in an age I don't where... Know that. Find out and tell me. I'll let you okay. know. <laughs> you got to put makeup on. That's how you build yeah, that's a brand. Right. Like for makeup for country. Hey, what, so yeah, quick side. When is somebody in country music going to put makeup on and pretend to be the country version of Kiss? I don't know. I'm really actually surprised that hasn't happened. You know, maybe maybe you're onto something. And I got a couple of dudes who would love to do country that are in metal bands right now. Maybe this is a good way to transition. No one will know who they are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean like one 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 guy can have horse makeup and one guy yeah. can have a a pickup cool. makeup or something yeah. like that and you know another one can have a shotgun and one guy's Ford yeah. face, you know. Yeah. There's Ford face. There's Chevy face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and you guys kind of already have you have the uh, country version of Steel Panther, the yeah. Wheeler Walker Jr. I know and he's gone though. I think he's done. I think really? he Really? Yeah, he kind of he kind of hit that peak and left, which is a bummer. But yeah, he was he was great. I mean, he's uh, weird. Okay, so tell me what you know about this. I just because he's a comedian to, to begin with, the guys, and I think he just it ran its course for him. I think it it, it kind of got much bigger than he thought it was going to get, and then it started getting serious, and he started touring, and I thought I think he was like, wait, this was just a joke that kind of exploded so interesting yeah, well, we i saw him twice and he was fantastic so for those of you who like steel panther go check out wheeler walker jr it's literally a country version of steel panther and he is the best just like steel panther he has the best musicians he literally has some of the best players in town on his records so it's, it's not like the record itself is pretty legit just the lyrics you're like what? I, I yeah i can i could am- i'm gonna have to check this out because i mean oh, yeah. as as crazy as steel panthers lyrics are to 80s music can you ju- i can just imagine what the country parody lyrics oh my God. would be could you imagine well, yeah the the i think his the uh, one big one is my pussy in boots i like my pussy in boots you boots guys. yes <laughs> and his, and his, that is, is awesome his- lisa your your camera's off i know because i have to move inside because i'm freezing Okay. What is his? He has a he has a ballad too. Uh, it's called "Fuck You, Bitch." Yeah. That's so there you go. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So check him out. He's re- he's really funny. That's so, awesome. I love it. So your latest your latest CD or most recent is um, "Smoke Out the Window," correct? Yeah. Yes. 
All right. Um, that came out fall of 2018? It just, yeah, it came out so almost about a year ago at this point okay. right now. All right. So you're still touring off of that disc. When are you going to produce more? Are you, do you ride with us now for a while, or where are you at? Well, we're, um, you know, because everything's changing. The music industry, I mean, it, it's sad because the idea of putting out albums, unless you're Tool, <laughs> yeah. doesn't, yeah, it doesn't seem to really be there's not the desire for that as much so now you know that might be the last album i do for i you know i can't for the foreseeable future because now we're probably just going to just cut singles and songs and put them out like every every two months or something because it's just to put all that work into a record and then end up having one song kind of catch and then it's like you don't have the opportunity to push anything else um it's almost like a waste because everybody's so like they want that one thing, they want the video, they want it to happen, and then they move on to the next thing. So if you wrap it in an album, that album kind of becomes collateral damage to that that mentality now. So we're writing and doing new stuff, but I mean, and we might repackage some of the other stuff um, under a new company too. Okay. You know, some some of the, the the clients I I'm working with go in and record an album's worth of material. 10, 12, 15 songs, but they don't release it all at one album release. They break it into three EPs. So now right. they've got something they can release every six months to keep that momentum and and the, the interest flowing. Because, yeah, if right. you do an album and you release an album and the album doesn't hit and explode – it's got about a three month life cycle to it and it's dead and it's over. And now you got to run back in and record 10 more songs. Well, you know, that doesn't happen in one day. No. And it takes time. And because nowadays everybody's all about content. Oh, that's what everybody talks about. We need content, content. So like if you do a whole record, unless you're going to sit there and methodically put out, you know, a, a song off that record every couple of months, exactly. But again, it kind of wears thin on people, but if you're right, it's a new EP. It's something new. All something new is coming out, and people get excited. Well, yeah, and and in in this day and age, a second single off of an album really doesn't have much excitement to it, like it used to have in in the '70s and '80s, because you you've got the whole album in front of you here on Spotify or Apple Music. That second single, dude, I've been listening to that since day one. You know, right. you don't you don't need to push that to me. So you want new material. As a right. as a fan, you want new material. So hey, four brand new songs just came out. Yeah. Yeah, we well we got the, the the company that we went into on this to distribute it, they were very I already had the EP done with a couple extra tracks and they were adamant about it being a full album. They're like we need it to be a full length because that's the only way we're gonna get European press and all this. So they you know, they had these reasons. I'm like, all right, we'll finish it. And I I, I wish that I hadn't because I would have rather had songs to hold back because I think we would have been better off. Um but you know, it's live and learn, you know. I mean, like I said, you can repackage stuff because most people you know, you can put it out on different formats and you can also all different platforms. You can find different ways to constantly, you know, you don't you don't have to reinvent everything. You just have to reinvent it for each platform. You know, I mean, you can do a YouTube thing for this. You can do a thing for this. And you can do a thing for that and hopefully find a way to, to maximize that one product as much as possible. You know, this is what we're trying to do. Do you think it helps you being in Nashville? You know, funny thing is, I really don't use. I mean, I'm, I'm not really the the mainstream up the gut country guy at this point. So, you know, I, I probably could be anywhere because I don't really use a lot of what mainstream country is. I don't really do much with radio anymore. Um, we're doing all our stuff on the road. I mean, it's either online or on the road. I mean, we had something weird happen recently. One of our songs got picked up by Vivo Phone, mm -hmm. which is a huge South Asian phone. It's I guess they're they're like iPhone or whatever. And um, that's been getting tons of traction. So now I'm trying to figure out a way that we can move, you know, and do some stuff in Asia and in Indonesia, which has got a thriving new music um, market. You know, we've got India, we've got all these different things that people are writing me every day. I mean, their lyric video is starting to blow up from that. So, I mean, the one good thing about being independent is I can move swift and I'm lean and mean. 
the bad thing is, is I'm pretty much an army of one. So you got to kind of balance that. Yeah. And that, that it has the challenges, but like you said, you, at least you have the freedom. Yeah. You know? And cause I've been working my way through your catalog. Uh, I haven't heard everything yet. And for those of you that um, may not be interested in country or didn't think you would be, you, you owe it to yourself to check this out. Now, Rick having, you know, the rock background too, he's done a couple of covers. So he yeah. did a really cool version of Motorhead's Ace of Spades. Yeah. And he just kind of turned it into country. It's very cool. And then also you did um, that cover of Midnight Rider. We did that. And we also did a cover of Hailstorms Here's to Us. That was on a bet. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. We did. But the funny, the cool thing about the Motorhead is actually, Lemmy really likes that version. And it was funny that that got played on Octane before we've ever been played on XM highway which is like, but, then, but jim florentine has is, is always been a, a good supporter and he's a good buddy you know and jim's like i, I really don't like country music but uh I, I like your stuff man i like that's that's uh that's all right. you know he, he had me on that metal show so it's hilarious I'm, I'm getting all these calls from people like dude what are you doing on that metal show and i stumped the trunk but uh, what was what was uh, the question that stumped him well, it's, it's, it was not fair because um, Bobby Jirazombek, who's playing for Sebastian Bach now, but used to play for Iced Earth and a couple other bands, um, actually did one of my records when I was living in L.A. We were buddies. And um, so I asked him what other albums he had been on, and um, he couldn't name them all. You know, or what, you know, what other bands he was actually on albums. I think he missed Riot or something like that. So, so I, I stumped him on that one. That's good to stump him. Yeah. No, but the Hales one. Yeah, the Hailstorm one was really cool because um, I was sponsored by Jägermeister. And when we were doing our tours, I was actually out opening for Aaron Lewis, but doing the country tour when Aaron's doing his country. Right. We would go to all these festivals because we would have – it was Aaron Lewis, Hailstorm, and Paul Oakenfold were all doing tours under the Jaeger banner. So on days off, I'd get to go see Hailstorm or Paul Oakenfold, which is cool because I had no idea who Paul Oakenfold was. And any of you listening don't know, he's like – the godfather of edm music he's got kind of really created it um so with hailstorm they just are the nicest people in the world i met them and then one day i was joking with them about the glee version of here's to us yeah and joe's like well if you could do it better then do it so we did so i don't know if we did it better but we did it <laughs> well that'll be on my list now to check out but you know and, and i like the body of work i like the variety you know um so it, for those of you that are rock fans, I, I took the liberty of writing a few titles down that I really love that I think you guys should check out because maybe a great way to do it is is with singles. So find the Ace of Spades. Um, but the two songs I love the most um, are uh, Honky Tonk Road Trip, I Remember the Music, and then my all-time favorite of all of them so far is This Side of the Dirt. Oh, wow, I love cool. that song. I love that. I don't know what it is. It's, I, I almost have a tendency to like the upbeat stuff more so than the ballady. So that might be a great place for you to start. But it goes back to that discussion again about, you know, let's face it, guys. Kiss isn't going to be here forever. REO Speedwagon. Name any number of bands that are done. And I don't want to quit going out and seeing live music. I want to get out there and, and support these, these acts so they do keep touring. Because it's not easy. Are you doing mostly weekends? Yeah, we, do, we do the 615 tour, which is what we call it, because because we're centrally located. Being in Nashville, you can be anywhere within six to eight hours, almost. Okay. You know, Eastern Seaboard, you can pretty much go out and do like three or four really good shows and be back home by Sunday or Monday. So that's kind of what we've been doing. And I'll tell you. Get out to Atlanta? Um, yeah, we come through there. Is that where you're at, Atlanta? Yeah, I live How in Atlanta. Traffic there. How do you do that? How can you handle the traffic there? Every time I see that we're driving through there, I'm like. <laughs> That's why I live in the northern part. I live oh, in the northern okay. suburbs, and I tr I commute seven minutes to work. I don't oh, that, go to town unless it's I absolutely have to. Yeah, it's a beautiful place, but, man, that's just tough. I'll tell you, you know who's, who's going to make a, a fortune? Talk about n new music. is finding a way to market to people that are because when you're kids that's where you develop your musical taste like you were um like you were saying earlier i'm a kid this is what i love and that carries you through your life that becomes your soundtrack and so those bands always have that if there was ever a way to find i guess i hate this in the middle age but between after your college years and into the other years to really market to those people new music it would be amazing because that's one of the hardest crowds to get to 
because we're already set in their musical ways. But if you can find well, a way to you get know, you, you also got to keep in mind as as your life, as you get older in your life, like, you know, when we were all kids, you had all the time in the world to listen to music and yeah. and explore and discover. But as you are going to school and college and graduating and starting jobs and families, it becomes harder and harder. I mean, I, I was even just thinking this myself about myself this week. It's like I, I, I love I love Spotify because their their release radar and discover weekly playlists are so tuned into me that I've discovered so many songs, albums, and artists that I would have never found if it wasn't for Spotify put in front of me. And I throw them all into this playlist I made called Listen To. And that playlist is like this freaking long because now I don't have time to actually go listen to the stuff. I'm more worried right now of like, okay, just don't forget about that band. Just add them so I don't forget who they are. But it might take me like, uh, you know, one one of the bands I I I loved is a a, a band called The Defiance, and uh, um, Rob in the band is a big Three Sides fan and a listener, and they just released a new album I don't know a week two weeks ago. I just haven't had a chance to sit down and hit the play on their new album. I will, but you know when I was fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen years old, there was nothing that stopped you from coming home. And putting that music on the turntable or in the CD player, and that's what you listen to. You didn't care about everything else. Now it's like, oh yeah, you know, I can't listen to it right now because I got to run to school and pick up my daughter, and then after that, we're doing a swimming play date, and life gets in the way. Right. Do you yeah. feel that with them um, now that there are no real player like CD players or record? I mean, obviously, vinyl's kind of make, making a comeback. But because you can't take something and throw it in your car anymore. I mean, you can Bluetooth it and all the other things, but do you feel like that is disadvantaged listening to new music or not? Um, no, I think it it it's actually an advantage because if I'm in the car and I'm like, oh, God, I've got a 45-minute drive. All right, I'm going to hook it up and I'm going to find that, that, that album on Spotify and I'm going to play it. So... It's the advantage is when you find that time and when you get that urge, you can listen to music anywhere you want to. Yeah. Um, it's just, uh, you know, again, life has a way of getting life has a way of getting in the way. Yeah. And and. It's just the way it is, you know, as a, as a younger kid, yeah, nothing stopped me from running out and buying that new album right away and coming home and listening to it right away. Now there's a lot of stuff. Oh, I got to go yeah. to the grocery store and buy dinner for tonight. You know? Life is busy. Well, and what helps me is, is if I'll turn on Alexa and then I'll just have a mix and that just, they'll slide in a couple of new songs with stuff I've already heard. And that helps kick my attention. So I can say, stop, who is this? That's, that's playing because the thing also too, that I don't have anymore that I had when I was a kid is other friends who were totally into music that could say, Hey, did you check out the new Judas priest record yet? Or whatever it might be. Now I don't have that group of friends. I would say that, that Michael more so than anybody else has probably turned me on to more music from him just talking about it. And then we have a thing here on three sides, which is the music challenge that he, comes to us every week and say, pick a song, old or new, doesn't matter what it is. And we put it up on a Spotify uh, challenge playlist to try to keep exposing people to some new music to hopefully get them to find something new that they didn't before. Because I can tell you, man, some of the bands I've discovered in the last decade, uh, even in the last five years, are turning out to be some of my favorite bands. Like Blackberry Smoke is a perfect example. Uh, in this moment, garbage. There's all kinds of them. There's a lot of great bands out there making a lot of great music. Yeah, you it, know, I, I I would strongly recommend to anybody. Uh, I don't you I don't use Apple Music nearly as much. Spotify is my go-to, but if you've got it, start using it and start paying attention. Spotify creates two playlists for you every week. 
every Monday they have an updated playlist called Discover Weekly, which is just about discovering new music. And it can have new releases and old releases. Believe me, I'm finding a lot of music from old bands that I never was never on my radar. Um, and then Release Radar is every Friday is just new releases. It's new releases of bands you're following, you're listening to, or that the algorithm says, you should probably like this because you listened to that band. This is right up your wheelhouse. They put it in front of you. So pay attention to those two playlists. And the more you use Spotify, the more it learns what you listen to and what you like. Now, here's where it can get a little messy. If you share your Spotify account with other people, <laughs> their tunes yeah. will influence what you listen to. So meaning parents, you got a kid who comes in and listens to, you know, some music for toddlers. Well, Spotify doesn't know it's a four-year-old listening to it and not a 40-year-old listening to it. Spotify just goes, oh, you also happen to like the Gummy Bear song. <laughs> like, so, I just have this mental account. playlist in my head and not hysterical. Yeah. So, so, you know, keep that in mind. Try and keep your, play, your, your usage of Spotify limited to you. So Spotify, and if that's the case, which is my case, over the years here, it's really learned exactly the kind of music I like. And it spits out bands, and I'm just like, I've never I've never heard of this band. I would have never discovered this band. But they dropped a song in, and I love that song. Great. Throw it into my listen-to playlist, because now I'm going to go back and see what other albums they've done, what other music they have, follow the band. So that sort of replaced your best friends recommending music to you is is the algorithms in these streaming services have gotten really good well and that's what that's what i get out of these festivals so i go to shoot for three or four days and i'm exposed to 70 maybe 70 to 90 bands for that four-day weekend and unfortunately you miss some and you can't stay and see the whole set for others but that's where I picked up most of my new music as well, because you really get to see what that band is like by listening to them live and hearing some of their originals. But that sounds like a great idea to use. I need to start using Spotify because I've got to break out of listening to the same stuff over and over because I get stuck as well. Can we just get Spotify to start paying like full royalties? <laughs> what was that? Can we just get Spotify to start paying full royalties? That'd be pretty nice. That's the only. That's the downside from us, but uh, I, yeah, it, 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 it is. I mean, I've got I've got a music business podcast, and I work with a lot of bands, and you know. But the the, the sad reality of that whole streaming thing is, at the end of the day, the record labels are still making millions of dollars every day off of streaming platforms. They are, and the money isn't making its way to the artist. So whether yeah. it's it's streaming. Whether it was CDs, vinyl, eight tracks, somehow those record labels have that creative accounting that says, "No, we're not gonna. We don't owe you any money," and it just never makes it to the artist. And you know, got to keep in mind, all the major labels are investors in all the streaming services. Yeah. They so, learned their lesson from iTunes after after iTunes yep. and M3.com and all that. Yeah. They learned they went, they went in big with Spotify. They had no problem getting involved with them. But, you know, hey, hey man, more power to them. They're smart. I'm just glad that I can make money on the road and that I make a living. Yes. You know I mean? I, I thank God every day that I actually – this is what I do. I don't do anything else. I don't have a job. I mean, I have a job. I'm a musician. But, you know. But, but well, that, yeah, we also say to people, too, when you go to a, a show and you see a band that you like, buy a T-shirt, buy a CD, buy something yeah. to help support them because it's important, you know, and it goes beyond just the tickets. And, and it's great that you're as an artist, you, you realize that there's a babysitter and parking and the ticket. But it goes beyond that, too, because if we don't support the artists, they'll just they won't be touring anymore. And I don't, I don't, I don't want to live in a world with no live bands. Yeah. Word of mouth is everything. I mean, and more and more, it's kind of sad too because a lot of venues are are really getting rid of live music too. Live music is starting to get whittled out, and DJs are starting to 
a lot of the country bars that used to have bands play all night, you know, now they'll have you play like a short set and it's DJ all night, yeah. you know? And so it's, so, I mean, if you love, I got to tell you, I always say this to people, if you like a band, love a band, talk about the band, share the band, follow their stuff, make sure you let everybody know. I mean, there's nothing better than somebody going out and just telling everybody about that band that, you know, that's in this day and age, word, word of mouth is so valuable, you know, even more so, even though there is the internet, it, it's still people getting that to the next person and yeah you know that's why you're here with us today i i I agree and uh also too before i forget i want to mention our friends wicked uh have a new album out all covered up so check that out i haven't heard it yet but i'm sure it's just like the last one so if you guys want to look for that just look for wicked.com i'm sure everything is available there on itunes as well you can purchase or download um so what do you want to do moving forward? What's the next step for you guys? Do you world domination? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I just I want to just keep creating music that I love that 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 um, I feel good about. It's weird because I mean I can kind of put on two hats. Once it's created, I can be very much a businessman and look at it like a widget. But when I'm in the creative process, I'm the artist. So I just want to be able to keep creating songs that that mean something to me that will hopefully mean if they mean something to me hopefully they'll mean something to other people and um just keep the opportunity of being able to go out and play and keep doing my job i love doing this i don't i really don't think i could do anything else or i don't want to do anything else so as long as i can keep doing this obviously you know there's business plans and growth models and ideas like that but the bottom line as long as i can put my guitar on and go play songs i'm going to be happy do you ever try to get on any uh, larger tours? We do. I mean, but the, one of the one of the biggest problems is is of course we're independent, which means that we you know we use like regional agents and some of the things like that. And so, you know, unfortunately, you know, the big boys have it all locked up pretty tight. And so it's you know now you know rocks always had a lot of buy on stuff. Country's just starting to do the buy on. Well, they- yeah, okay. that's that's kind of become a thing. Or it's click oriented where five guys who all wrote together, one guy becomes successful. They keep all those guys on tour with them. And they, 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 all those spots are extremely um, valuable. So it's very hard to kind of break into those. So we kind of create our own path and go our own way as much as we can. And we tour, you know, we, we're, we're always doing openings and doing shows with people. And I, for years, I was out with Jägermeister and I got to tour with some really big artists. But now that we're out as a band, I was doing all that solo. Yeah. You know, to reinvent the wheel a little and i got monster energy drink as a sponsor who's been awesome to me oh so. very cool yeah i was just going to mention that because <laughs> yeah they they are really ahead of the curb and they like to have artists of all genres yep. that they feel represent their demographic yeah well, and they thanks. realize the country is a, is a country is, I, I said to jaeger when i first went to them they were only doing metal and I had the conversation. I said, look, your demographic for metal is 14 to 20, 21 maybe. Yeah. I said, that's it. I said, so you only have maybe one year of drinking age for your hardcore metal fans before they move on to something else. I said, country, you have 14 to dead. I said, that's a long <laughs> – that's the demographic you want. You have Taylor Swift fans all the way to, you know, Vern Gosden fans. I mean, you've got the – and Everybody. Yeah, and country has now become what rock used to be. Country used to be like in, in a music store was this little section and yeah. rock ABBA to ZZ Top. Country is now A to Z that big of a platform. You know? Yeah. Well, and, and it, I, it makes sense. And that's the other thing, too, is when you look at rock shows versus country shows, the country people drink way more than right. the rock people do. They party. Yeah. And yeah. It's, it's interesting, you know, that, and that was the thing we were talking about remember on the phone or on, on your show is I was at, um, I always get the name, uh, Thomas Rhett the other night on the long, hot summer tour. And there was four artists, Thomas obviously being the, the headliner. And it reminded me of the eighties and seventies rock shows in the respect that, that the, the, I can't remember the last time I was at a show where all the fans were so jacked up in between these artists. Now, so you go to a Kiss show, yeah, everyone's excited and happy to be there. But this is like to the next level where the odd thing was they were playing hip-hop yeah. in between the 
the country artists and all these people knew all the words and were singing along and it was just it was just bizarre to me because it, it seems like such an opposite thing yet everyone was having fun and they're all singing at the top of their lungs and everyone's standing up and i'm talking about people even up in the nosebleeds were standing up and singing along to these songs that they had a dj in between each one and the party atmosphere was really quite uh, amazing yeah it's a lifestyle man i mean you got look at it because you know we've had for years you've had nelly and tim mcgraw do something together you just had that huge hit um old town road which was you know a big hip-hop thing with um you know uh, what's his name um billy ray cyrus so i mean billy ray cyrus has been involved in two of the songs that have been the most detrimental to the music industry ever <laughs> you, you are, you know, <laughs> yeah billy ray cyrus, he's the one that does that uh, the horse song right is that what it's called yeah, that's it. really, yeah. i'm gonna yes. take my horse to the old town road oh. and go on. Right. My, 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 <laughs> five, my five-year-old daughter walks around the house singing that well, song yeah. That is every baseball boy's walk-up song. Yep. Better than Save a Metallica, what's wrong with people? Come on. <laughs> but, but, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing, because I've worked with some country artists. You know, the country genre and the country business is still accepting of new music, young talent, and, and has a structure – to support it now it's not a cheap structure to get into yeah. but it's still there whereas rock i mean i was talking to one of my rock clients about this i'm like it it's impossible for a rock band to pretty much tour the u.s and make money you just can't do it there's plenty right. of clubs they just aren't going to pay you any money and i'm not talking about the kisses of the world that's those bands are such a small fraction of it but even the biggest bands in rock can't get away with new music. Nobody wants new rock music anymore. They only want the old classics. Where Unless you're three country, days grace. What was that? Unless you're three days grace, those guys just keep hitting, making hits somehow. Yeah. Well, you know, it, <laughs> yeah. but a lot of these bands will keep making music. It just gets released and it goes nowhere and nobody listens to it because there's no radio that wants to play it. There's no video support. And, and in concert, your fans are like, I want to hear something else from the your last album. Right. But Maiden kind of gets away with it, though. When they release a new record, people seem to embrace that because I saw them on the last two but, tours. But, but they are... Yeah, they're, they're a different level. They're of band. different level. That's a whole other. That's a whole other. Yes, they've got fans who want to hear new music from them. I would love to have a new Kiss record. You, you know, that's the cheap trick record out that you said was really good, but I, I didn't even know there was a new one. Yeah, the last two are just unbelievably amazing, at least in my opinion. And I am so thrilled that one of my favorite bands is still making records, and apparently they actually have a third one done. Wow. Uh, that now they're shopping for a label deal. So it's been in the can and done for six months. What do you guys think about the whole thing with Tool? Like, what is what is your thought on that? I mean, a $35 record, 10-minute single – and it beats Taylor Swift. Like, like, is that something that's changing that might have a good effect on the industry, or is it just an anomaly? I, I, I think it's good because what it's showing is you don't have to release the three-minute, 30-second single, and, you know, it can be expensive, and it can be a fancy packaging. It's, it's pretty much putting a nail in the coffin of all of the old school music industry practices of it's got to be this, 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 and this, if you're going to make yep. it work, you got to have a rock tune. You got to have a ballad tune. It's got to be short songs that rate. They've realized, which everybody kind of knows, none of that means anything anymore, especially when it comes to rock. When you're right. tool, who's going to play tool on the radio? There's no radio outlet for, for tool there's no mtv so when you don't have those constraints you can now actually be just completely creative with yeah. no walls built around you saying well that's a great 10 minute song but we really need a three minute radio edit and you're like yeah. no i don't want to do that you're going to do that if you want us to release the record All right so and 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 you know even getting to going back to gene simmons vault he was selling the experience of getting the music, which 
you know, for the most part, since since the internet took over, there was no experience in buying music anymore. Not like it used to be when it was like every Tuesday and you made a plan to, you know, maybe it's like I'm going to go have a bite to eat and then I'm hitting Tower Records and I'm going to see what's new. And, you know, oh, there's a, a midnight in store for the new Metallica record because it's that sort of stuff is sort of gone by the wayside because it's like you you wake up and your iTunes on Friday morning has downloaded the new album for you and there it uh, is. So Gene is, went can, back to selling is, the is this like is, with tour, are, are they are they is this going to be like one of their last tours that they're saying or no are they I mean are they is is this like what they say is going to be their last tour? Uh, I going- I think I think this is the last tour of Gene and Paul. Yeah in kiss i don't think kiss is going away i think kiss will continue to release stuff and do stuff and frankly i think they will attempt to do a kiss 2.0 with four completely new people in it so that's something i heard that is like a kind of a rumor thing do you think that's like that's actually something that they're i I think i think they will try i think they realize that a kiss 2.0 isn't going to play to twenty thousand people a night Right. Vegas. It might, it might be, yeah, residencies, Vegas type of thing. Um, but I think, you know, in the case of KISS, what you got is they started out as a band, but the brand became so enormous. The brand and the recognition of that name and the makeup became bigger than the people. It yeah. eclipsed them. It eclipsed them. And, you know, that... that, that clearly pisses off some kiss fans but doesn't matter whether it pisses you off it's the reality i've said this to many people when i do especially when i do like keynote speeches you take the kiss logo in jeans makeup and you could probably go anywhere on the planet and show it to anybody and they will probably know what it is yeah. They may have never seen the band in concert. They may not own a single album. They may not be a fan of anything, but there's recognition of, I know that logo and I know the makeup. Yeah. So having created something that massive, frankly, it would be stupid and foolish to not try and keep that brand moving forward and continuing. Well, and I can see Disney or someone buying it just like they did the Star Wars thing. But before we go further, I just wanted to say, back to your question about the Tool album, I'm not a Tool fan. I saw them a couple years ago, and it was like, I wanted to gouge my eyeballs out. There's a lot of people that want to gouge their eyeballs out when it comes to the Tool. But I am so happy for them and so proud of them that they released a record that people want to buy. I I was just thrilled to see that. Because to me, that's like, we had this discussion a while ago, I don't know if you're familiar with Greta Van Fleet or not. But you've got all these young kids who don't give a shit about Led Zeppelin that are going to concerts and buying their records and filling, you know, 8,000, 7,000 seaters for this young band. And I'm like, this is wonderful. And then you have a bunch of 40 and 50 year olds dumping on it because, oh, they're just ripping off Led Zeppelin. It's like, you don't get it. It's not about Led Zeppelin. It's about younger people that are gravitating towards people who are actually writing songs. Yeah, this is a good thing for everybody. But the tool thing for me, the best part was watching the reaction of the Taylor Swift fans. I was just, I was waiting for that. I was just about to say the Swifties was like that was like that was like dessert for me watching that. I just, oh. I was like, mm, what are you saying? <laughs> oh, oh, no, 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 you keep saying, come on, come on here. <laughs> oh God, they were losing their minds. Who is this new oh. tool band? This yeah. new. <laughs> It's crazy. So anytime someone hits it out of the park like that, be it Tool, Greta Van Fleet, you know, I don't care, whoever it is, man, it's a day for all of us as music fans to celebrate. Definitely. You know, because what you were saying earlier about, you know, these country places in Nashville now being taken over with DJs and short sets, the problem we have in Minneapolis is that you can't get booked unless you're a cover band. Right. If you're a cover band, like, I can't say to the country because I haven't, been any of those but if you're the same thing yeah we have a lot of that word and you know it's weird though is even major artists if they've only had one or two radio hits will do mainly a cover set i mean i've seen some pretty big artists do all covers and do like their two radio singles and that's it 
Wow. Okay. Because here in town, it's like, if you don't play, pour some sugar on me, talk dirty to me and uh, sweet child of mine, they will chase you down the street with fire. <laughs> and it's like every single band has to do that. And um, tomorrow I'm heading up to uh, Hinkley for a two day festival called Rock Timber. And there's a lot of mostly eighties bands. And the, one of the headliners, one of the headliners, excuse me, is uh, Pat Benatar, who I absolutely love. And I think Neil Giraldo, incredible musician, they keep writing and releasing material yet. They've even said it uh, publicly, publicly on stage. Look, if we don't play, they call the dirty dozen, we will be crucified on social media the next day they can't break out of it and it's just kind of sad because they have such an incredible body of work well you know it it, it sort of comes down to and i can't remember who i was talking to maybe i was i can't remember it was in the last couple weeks and we were talking about rock bands having to play their greatest hit sets and you know, in the Kiss world, we've always sort of known that the promoters were like, oh, you got to have three original members of Kiss for this tour to be booked. Oh, now it's got to be two original. Well, he was telling me, you know, so many of these promoters are like, all right, you've got it. It is in a contract for just so many bands now. You've got to have at least three quarters of the original band. And you've got to guarantee a set that is 75 percent hits. 80% hits. So you can't even get shows. You can't even book shows if you don't play that game with the promoters. And I, I, part of it all goes back to the fans and buying their tickets. Yeah. So I booked, I booked a small club for about a year and a half. And for about the first year, we tried nothing but original bands. We had um, Slaughter, Dokken, Winger. The, they came in, put on amazing shows. But we would inevitably sell 50% of the house. That was it. But we bring in a Led Zeppelin cover band. Packed the place. Packed mm -hmm. the place. And, and, it, and it came down to if the venue wanted to survive, if the venue literally didn't want to go out of business... They had to stop booking original bands yeah. because people wouldn't buy the tickets for that. So we had to switch to a Motley Crue tribute and a, you know, a ZZ Top tribute and and you know you Led Zeppelin tributes because that was going to put four or five hundred people in every time. Yeah. And it's just like, come on, people, fans, if you want that music to survive. You actually, and this goes into what we were talking about earlier, you have to go out and support it. You can't just go on Facebook and say you love the band. That does nothing. Saying you love that band and that tour, it's great they're touring and the new album, awesome, you released it, but you didn't buy the album and you didn't buy a ticket to the tour, does absolutely nothing for that artist's career. Because okay. at the end of the day, the venues and the promoters are looking at what did you sell and record labels and distributors are going how many streams did you get how many albums did you sell if it doesn't happen they're, they're not going to support you they're going to be selling you produce not making songs yeah, for you it, it, exactly so it, it it kills me to see the fans who are like oh it's all about original music and down to tribute bands it's like yeah but are you buying you spending the money on it? No, it's, and it's weird from, from our point of view, what we've ended up doing when we have to do longer nights where we definitely have to um, satisfy the, the cover situation, we just make medleys. We'll just go in the key of G. Great way, yep. And, do medley. and then when I do originals at some places, I won't even say it's an original. I'll just add it in, play it through, go to the next thing. So I'll be like, that was a really cool song. What was that? Oh, that was one of ours. But instead of making a big stink out of it, I just kind of – go along our thing and it, it, that seems to work but it's kind of weird so i saw joan osborne in london and i went to the show she's amazing she sings like janice joplin then she gets to her hit and she goes this is the horrible song you all wanted to hear and does what if god were one of us and she yeah. has a horrible version of it and then she goes now let's get back to what i want to do and i and it struck me weird in the sense of yeah that's why everybody bought that ticket because nobody knew anything else about joan osborne but that one song 
But the fact that she was so like upset about that song, I was like, you got to find a happy medium because you need to bring people in, let them love that song, and then learn about your new stuff or find a way to. You got you got to you got to fake that you're at least excited about playing right. that song because yep. as you as you said earlier, these people spent hard earned money and a lot of it to come out and see you in concert. Right. So at least fake that you like it. Maybe you a back in the dressing room, you were like, God, if I got to play that one more time, I'll kill myself. But you but don't say what, that on what, stage. That's what paid for a house. And I don't, I don't know if you guys, you guys remember band Texas Tornadoes? Yeah. yeah the Texas, sir. Yeah, okay. I've, I've had, before um, Doug Soms passed away, I got a chance to do some stuff recording in the studio. I had no idea who they were. I was just recording there. And But Doug told me, he goes, man, he goes, there's songs that we play that we played for 30 years. And he goes, I hate those songs. But at the moment we start, and I see how happy people are, I can't wait to play it. Because he goes, I, 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 I shift my, my, my mentality from, I'm tired of playing this to, oh, look how happy they are. Yep. And he says, and that's what you got to do. So, I don't and know. That's, that, no, and, and that's the way it should be. And, you know, and I've got some friends here in town, Arena, they recorded a record a couple of years ago, and they, they do some of their originals with a bunch of covers. And like you, they just slide it in there, and people seem to respond to it. It's almost like you're better off if you don't say it and just roll with it. But they're having a very hard time at times getting booked if they're playing any original music just because of all of these things we're discussing. And it's just the thing I would really love to understand is who the hell is going to the bar? Are these people that are going to the bar – the people that really don't listen to music and they're just going out to drink. So they want to hear pour some sugar on me or Pretty are much. they actual music fans going out to see it? Um, if it's a hard sale ticket, that's a music fan. If it's a person just going to a bar, they want to hear sweet home Alabama again and again yeah. and again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a dilemma, but you also got to understand the bar needs to thrive. So, I mean, it's, it's like everything there's, it's, you know, it's everything in moderation and you have to find a happy medium. So with music, I mean, obviously you have to make stuff that people want to hear, but you have to satisfy yourself as an artist. So that's also always a juggle. So, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and, 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 then, and then you got the business that gets in the way and says, great, you satisfied yourself here, but yeah, you know, we're not going to book that because you're not playing what we know. I mean, listen, a good bar knows exactly what they need to yeah. fill that place and how they they know what style of music and what bands are going to sell great at the bar. Yeah. Because again, at the end of the day, for most bars, they don't make their money selling tickets. Oh, it's the booze. It's the booze. We the sell booze lots. and more booze. And then they get the bands that bring the girls because the guys will go and the girls go. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. the, 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 the place I worked at, one of the best nights at the bar was when we had a ZZ Top cover band in there. Yeah. It just brought the people in and they just drank mm -hmm. and drank and kept drinking. And that made the bar very happy. And guess what? The bar was like, ah, so you didn't sell enough tickets to sell it out. We had the best night at the bar ever. We're bringing you back. Yeah, well, that's all. I mean, selling liquor. I mean, that's, that's how I got a, a sponsorship because they started tracking my liquor sales across the country. And they're like, wow, you're outselling everybody. You, we can see the spike everywhere you guys play as that's far as cool. liquor sales. So, I mean, somehow we sell a lot of liquor. I don't know if that's a, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I got to worry about that. I, mean, yeah. <laughs> I think it's a good thing because people are having a good time and they're going out and they're enjoying themselves. Yeah, and we try to do that. That's, that's, to me, that's what the most important thing is, is to try to – you know, entertain people when we're out there, but you know. yeah. Well, a kid rock played at the Minnesota state fair a few years ago and they ran out of beer. Yeah. Yeah. They I can believe ran that out of beer at the state yeah. fair, you know, cause that's how much beer was consumed. So yeah, I, I, you know, so maybe that's the way to also promote yourself is look for those different types of marketing angles that you can let bar owners and promoters know about that enhance that, take a chance on me kind of thing. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if you find, and there are still a couple good promoters, people know how to promote. And when you run into those people, they're worth their weight in gold because a good promoter can take a situation, know how to blow it up the right way, know the right people to get into, know the right avenues, know the right radio station, know the right person to talk to. They can, they can take a regular show and actually make it an event. And bars, and we've been at bars that were smart enough to start playing our videos 
a month ahead. You know, yeah. put videos up on the screens, talk about it, tell everybody we're coming, blah, 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 blah. Put the posters up. You show up and there's people excited. I've also shown up at places that were paying us way too much money and there's nothing about us being there. And you're like, well, you're going to be upset because no one's going to show up because no one knows we're here. We well, did, our, you know, our marketing, but you're not marketing. Well, and it's only in their best interest to do that. I, that yeah. just seems like common sense to play the videos and let people know that you're coming and have the posters up and all that. But you're right. There are some bars that they just can't get their act together. So mm -hmm. some of it's their own fault because of that situation. But, you know, what do you do? You just go back to this because Gene Simmons is probably one of the best promoters in the world as far as promoting brands and everything like that. He just needs to teach a class in promotion to be yeah. able to, how to promote brands and different things because that guy's always been brilliant at that. I mean, Which he sold his coffins. Come on. Yeah, I know. Which is – that's the most ironic piece of it is, is he's one of the best marketers in the world and yet he gets slammed by some other musicians that kiss socks. But it's just yeah. like, no, at the end of the day – you're going to tell me you wouldn't want their checks? Well, and they and they, they have iconic songs. I don't care what you – you can bash on them all you want, but Love Gun, Detroit Rock City, Cold Gin is an awesome song. These are these are songs I love. I, I, those are songs I hear and I go, yeah, I get excited to hear. So how, how does that suck? I mean – You should be able to make a good country version out of Cold Gin. That actually probably would be a good one. Yeah. yeah. They tried to do that. Remember they did that country tribute album? Like yeah, that was like Hillbilly yeah. Kiss. Dixie. Wasn't it Hasty yeah. Dixies or something? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe, 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 maybe it's time to do like a, another and, one. And, and, and if you remember on the convention tour, they would play a country version of God of Thunder. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. They would joke around with it and play a country, country-fied version of it. We said, we have one, one of our... Drunken moments is always God gave rock and roll to you. We because we, we all get drunk and sing the harmonies and stuff together. We've got a couple really bad videos floating out there live on Facebook from us doing. Excellent. <laughs> well, you know, and this might be a great thing. You could do Rick Monroe's Cold Gin and start your own freaking distillery. Yeah, there you go. That'd you be know, great. Anything's possible. Man, I'm a vodka guy, man. I don't know. So maybe I'd have to learn to like gin. Yeah, but if they're buying it from me, I don't know if it's going to really matter. Mm -mm. You could just you could just fill your bottle with vodka. That's vodka. exactly like, it. On, on stage, your delicious. bottle's got vodka in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, then if I did that, then I'd have to get uh, probably have to get Gene to like sign off on it, and then I'd have to deal with him. He'd be like, right. "Oh, yeah. Gene, all that okay? That'll be uh. <laughs> exactly." But you know what? I, they seem like they're pretty good to work with if you just cut them in. Oh yeah. hell yeah! Why wouldn't you? That would that'd, yeah. that'd be awesome. Huh. That's a question we've asked many times on this show. Why wouldn't you? I, yeah. know. I mean, yeah, I suppose you could just ignore the cease and desist letters they send you. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I, don't, away. I don't think I have the, um, the war chest to deal with that. I, you know what I mean? <laughs> Who does? Yeah. Who does? Um, okay, so we've been going for 90 minutes wow. now. I know, amazing. Time flies. So this is the part where we get to you and promoting you. So please, how can people connect with you? Where can they find you? Just Rick Monroe. If you just go almost anywhere on the web, just if you look up Rick Monroe, it's pretty easy to find because rickmonroe.com is kind of a splash page. We have Instagram, which is Rick Monroe. Twitter is Rick Monroe. Facebook is Rick Monroe Official. Um, uh, I think Snapchat's Rick Monroe. So that's all pretty much, it's all really simple. And, um, you know, I do my own social media, so I'm always the guy that's answering and doing stuff and taking stupid pictures. And so, yeah, it's, it's legit. It's us. And um, obviously Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Amazon, everything. We're on all the platforms. Um, our YouTube channel, which thanks to Asia is starting to really get some good traction. I'm excited. Um, so if you have any any Indonesian fans, you know, keep hey, listening to this side of you. Have fans yeah. all around the world. That's you all. never know. You, but see, that's the thing. You never know where it's going to break. And sometimes that's all it takes to get something rolling. So I encourage each and every one of you, give it a shot. And again, also get off your asses and go out and see live music. You don't have to see. The other thing too, Rick, that you don't may not know is that we have a lot of listeners who live in a lot of different areas of the world that may may not be near friends that have the same musical taste. So a lot of them sit home and don't go out. And we've been getting more and more people who've been emailing us saying, hey, thanks for encouraging me, encouraging me to get out of the house and go see a show. I enjoyed it. 
and I met other fans that are like-minded. So get out there and see some live shows. Go check out Rick if he comes to your area. You're going to meet other people who like similar music, and it'll be a fun time. It's much better than sitting at home. You can always tape whatever's on TV. And you know what what I would add is there's a lot more music to listen to than just Kiss and Motley Crue and Metallica. Whatever your favorites are, you don't have to listen to the same stuff seven days a week. Yeah. Take a chance and listen to something else. Listen to an artist who said, I grew up as a Kiss fan. Okay, pay him a little respect and go listen to their music. Maybe it's not your thing, and maybe you won't ever listen to it again, but you tried. So I always told my daughter when it comes to eating food, I just want you to try it. You don't have to eat it, just try it. Mm -hmm. Well, Rick's got a lot of songs. You're going to find at least one you like. There you go. Oh, thank you, Tommy. You're awesome. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm really enjoying it because I'm trying to mix it up, too. So I didn't get stuck listening to the same thing, you know, because like for whatever reason, I was thinking the other day, I haven't listened to Cheap Tricks, Next Position, Please from 1983 and forever. So I put that on, listened to the whole thing, and then I just started mixing in other songs that were similar to that band. And I heard some stuff from the 70s and 80s I'd never heard before. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, that's interesting. So, yeah, come on, guys. Get out there and support the music and try something new. It so like- so let, let's come up with some homework questions here. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Okay, well, so I'm going to challenge each and every one of you. Go out and check out Rick's music and, and let us know which song you like. I, 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 I would say I, I would challenge it even in a more general sense. Go out and, and listen to some country music. Mm-hmm. Stop listening for one hour. Stop listening to heavy metal, hair metal, whatever it is. Likely go, all this will still be there for you in an hour. You know, <laughs> make, make, you, you can close the door and make sure nobody sees you doing this. Hit the We're button. <laughs> play, play some country music. See what you can discover. Don't blast it in your car. It's cool. Go yeah. walking out. Are you wearing cowboy boots? No, no, I'm not. No, those are... Those are something else. I don't know what that is. <laughs> is that a trucker hat on you? No, man. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's, it's, but it's yeah, good. you know, li- go 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 check out some country music. You know, start with yeah. Rick, and then you know what's great if you're on Spotify, you go look at related artists, and that's going to give you this whole page of other artists that would be the similar and st- style. Click on one or two of those and see what you find. And let us know what you think. Yeah, yeah gateway drug, um, besides us, would definitely be like an Eric Church, Blackberry Smoke. Those are good gateway drugs for people going from metal to a uh, country. So, yeah. oh, I, 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 I would also add, you know, I think Jason Aldean is a good gateway. His earlier stuff was definitely. His with earlier all the stuff, definitely, yeah. Um, yeah. Brantley Gilbert has got some good stuff that's, that's, that's kind of in that vein. So yep. there's yeah. a bunch of them out there. And Aaron Lewis, yeah. hey, if you're a stain, oh god, stain. yeah, Aaron Lewis came from Stain, so please. Yeah. But he's legit. Yeah. I mean, that boy is, is as country as can get. I mean, I've, I've had the fortune of touring with him a bunch, and um, as much as he is the singer of Stain, he is he is a redneck straight up, yep. man. He is a old country boy, so that's that cool. stuff comes legit. Well, and Darius Rucker, yeah. another one I really like. That's that's awesome. kind of guy. Very much. I mean, that's that's kind of to me. His stuff kind of sounds like Hootie anyway, so it's not really a different. Yeah, but get out there, try something new. It won't kill you. No, nope. you said your your other uh, playlists will be there waiting for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You won't get hate mail from Black and Lawless, yeah. so it's all good. All right, so you guys, you guys know where to go to leave your homework answers. Head over to facebook.com dot slash three sides of the coin. Head over to our website, YouTube channel, Spreaker, Spotify, Instagram, Twitter. We're everywhere that you're supposed to be. So you can find us. Leave comments. Show us a little social media love. Hit that subscribe button on YouTube and leave a review and rating on iTunes. We would greatly appreciate it. Awesome. Rick, thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. I had an awesome time. It was fun. This is great. Oh, hey, you're welcome anytime. You're always welcome.
And by the way, Tommy did a really good. I have a podcast called Road Life. I want to plug that real quick. Sure. Tommy, yes. we, did a, we did a great interview with that, and it's just it's all about people making a living on the road. And I've had everybody from PGA stars to Grant Fuhrer, if you're a big NHL fan. I've had NASCAR. Um, I so had why Eric the hell Turner. did you have Tommy? <laughs> Not really sure. I don't know yet. He's still tra- traveling, taking photos. I just was like, well, what's what's it like, you know, to do, especially because his work is amazing. So I was like, well, what's it like, you know, do you know, a day in the life of going out and doing shooting a festival? So I was always curious about that. Like, you know, I've got guys who are truck drivers. I've had military war heroes. I mean, anything, anybody that has to kind of travel to work. So that's that's the kind of the idea behind that. Yeah, it was fun. Check that out, too. Road Life with Rick Monroe. And you can find that also anywhere. So get out there and check that out, too. Awesome. Cool. Rick, thank you so much. This was a thank pleasure. You. Yeah, have a good one. You, too. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks. Download your free free copy of the KISS School of Marketing. 11 Lessons I Learned Working with KISS. The number one downloaded business book on Noise Trade. Go to books.noisetrade.com slash Michael Brandvold. You're listening to Three Sides of the Coin. So you love the show. Go to itunes.threesidesofthecoin.com and leave your review and rating of Three Sides of the Coin. Thanks.